हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द ब्लू डॉट ए वी आर विथ फिल्म मेकर फैसल हाशमी एंड फैसल हाशमी हैज बीन मेकिंग शॉर्ट फिल्म विच आर अवार्ड विनिंग शॉर्ट फिल्म एंड ही हैज ओपन अ न्यू चैप्टर इन इज लाइफ एंड ही हैज गॉ इन टू द फिलानफिक वर्ल्ड एंड ट्राइंग टू हेल्प द पीपल एंड हिज फर्स्ट जर्नी वॉज टू पाकिस्तान yeah with khalid al amiri so we'll hear a we'll we'll question we'll have a quick discussion of uh, how his experience were in pakistan and what he felt and what his next plans are yeah faisal hashmi welcome to the bro pleasure welcome. pleasure being here yeah so uh, faisal let me uh, ask you the first question that we have right now is uh, how did it all start you know from the film making and then skipping over to the uh, you know to going to pakistan and you know uh, opening a new world so how did it affect you and what were your experiences yeah for sure so i come from um, a better film making background so i've made like you know sh- short films like that a comedy or horror or sci-fi like that's my thing where i'm scripting it everything is sort of controlled um, that's the world that i found myself more comfortable with um, but i've also at many times shot um, some documentary stuff you know especially with khalid you know I've, uh, his style is very documentary he's it's all about like let's go to a location let's go to a topic and let's find out what 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 what's an interesting story we can tell there so uh, in december uh, november december 2019 i was i was working with him for like a one to two month period just sort of uh, you know whatever kind of stories he wanted to tell so it was interesting for me to adapt to that style because you know when, when you're shooting a documentary uh, you can't think of like okay i'm going to sit down get the perfect light it's all about capturing you know capturing things on a run and gun uh, situation so it was a nice adjustment period that i that i that i learned from um there a couple of years passed we were in touch um and um you know we were always finding ways to maybe work together on something maybe he could work with one of my short films and stuff like that we had those discussions and then literally a uh, couple of days before we flew he called me and he said that uh, he has an opportunity to to fly to pakistan to cover uh, the flood situation and now i was aware of the flood situation because of everybody was talking about this those videos were being shared about how buildings are just completely being drowned um but and he said that he would prefer a filmmaker who um has the connection to that story um and and since we had worked together we were we were comfortable with each other as well and so he asked me if i'm free to literally fly the day after tomorrow um and 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 i had i had literally 5 to 10, 10 minutes to think about it and because my schedule was was free i said yeah i would love to love to go along and and capture that get that journey so within a, within 24 hours we have we were all getting our stuff ready he was getting his visas ready everything like that um and then we 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 flew there um even there the journey wasn't super um smooth because we landed in karachi the original plan was to shoot something uh, on the outskirts of sindh but then uh, last minute we got a better opportunity to go to rajanpur which is an even more affected uh, area of uh, in, in punjab uh, and we and so literally that night from karachi we flew to lahore and then we had uh, some fixers and some government officials helping us out and we took a 6 hour drive to 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 rajanpur uh, we stayed in another city before that and in the morning we just took those roads and those roads are not an easy road to take because many of them are flooded many of them are closed you know there's a lot of bureaucracy involved in in getting through these mm-hmm. places um so it was but but it's the one good thing about khalid is that because he's a, a well known personality he has an access he he can he can call people he can people know who he is and so some doors can open in terms of filming these things that may not have been open if it was just me or somebody else going alone um so but it was a very different experience because uh, as we got further into those those like got out of lahore which is completely unaffected from from anything but as we started going to the rural side of things uh, the industry were closer to that you could just start seeing the water levels rise and you can still see around you places where like crops and farmland was was now there is uh, now there is just water completely com- now it's completely clear- killed the land um and then as you go further out you can see houses that were there and now they're completely submerged you know from smaller levels to bigger levels and we went there when i think a couple a week after the water had subsided a little bit some people were saying that it's up to 10 feet it used to be so imagine more than our heights it is where the water level was and now it's going down but in that process they've already sort of dissolved the houses because these houses are not some building level material you know in, in these in these in these rural places so it was just sort of heartbreaking but also sort of enlightening to to see um the amount of destruction that this caused and just seeing um uh, how, how many poor people we have in our country specifically but also like how badly they have been affected the most compared to anybody else in the in the country so i think it was definitely a sort of an eye opening experience for me so it was this first experience where you went first hand and got uh, involved yes for sure I've, so i've 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 been to pakistan uh, you know multiple times in my life but i've always been somebody who goes to karachi and and, and only recently i've been to lahore once uh, but this was the first time i 
went to sort of the, the, the poor the poor parts of the country, the more rural parts of the country where any other river. So um, going out there and just seeing the level of poverty, but also just seeing how much displacement has happened because of the of, of the floods and just seeing these people just living in, in, in temporary housing, these these camps and relief camps and tents that have been set up for them. Um, and so many women and children was was the most surprising part because you know the uh, like that's the that's a sad part is like they don't even know what's really happening. You know, if like kids up to like four to five years old, um, they, they're they're sitting there and they're they are un, un, unaware of what's happening. They've made these um, makeshift hospitals out of schools, so they've turned the schools into makeshift hospitals to treat. Because when floods happen, a lot of diseases come with it. Right. You know, these kids are just playing around in that flood water. It's un, un, mm. unsanitary. So uh, some of the doctors talked about how that's the next step. Unfortunately, it could be where a lot of these diseases pop up because of the conditions these guys are living in. So um, so yeah, it was it was definitely a first time for me to to sort of go out and see that and capture that as a as a filmmaker. You know, I've, I've even when I've done documentary stuff, it's always been in Dubai or it's in, or, or or you know in city uh, atmosphere. So going out there in the in the harsh, you know, and it was really hot there as well. Like by the way, it's like that's what the biggest surprise was that uh, people living in tents in completely hot, like it's as hot as Dubai over there during the midday. Um, so it, just going out there and capturing all of that and just capturing images so that people hopefully back home and around the world can just see the magnitude of the things that have that, that have happened there and hopefully that brings awareness of 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 being able to provide the aid. So uh, are we talking about documentary? Documentary that we should be expecting soon. Or yeah. So we've so we've yeah. so, so there's two elements to it. There was a social um, there was a social media side of it, which Khalid posted a lot of stories. You know, we yes. we we did a lot of stuff that can be really great for Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. But we were also shooting a lot of stuff on on, on a DSLR. So there will be a sort of a longer form video, similar to the structure of the stories he shared, but with more images, more B-roll, more drone shots to really just show. So it's going to be a, a, a short clip, but mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to be more. Showing you the scope of what what happened, it's going to be on YouTube, and it's and and that's what my primary focus was to get those so that the world around because on Facebook and Instagram you have Khalid's audience, right, which is great, right. but on YouTube you have you can expand to to anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world can watch and watch that stuff. So mm -hmm. um, so so the aim was to sort of make something that anybody in the world can see the magnitude of, of destruction and displacement that's happened there. So that's what you can expect. You know, it's 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 in the edit stages, but even with the stories, you can see the, the kind of levels uh, of places we went to and the kind of people we talked to and and sort. Of the victims of of this whole affair. Now, uh, Khaled Al Amir is one of the um, obviously you know well-known influencers yeah. out there. But do we have more influencers who are coming up, and uh, are they doing their part? Uh, yeah. To, uh, I mean, so for for me them. again, I'm, I I don't. I know Khalid is one person who's in, who who has always been sort of interested in, in telling stories. That's why I haven't worked with many influencers in my in my in my career. But he was always someone who I respected because he was never about just about himself. It's always about uh, through my lens, I will tell a story. Mm -hmm. You know, like through me, you're following me, but I'm gonna in, in, like talk about something. Either go to Pakistan. He's been to Pakistan before. He's been to India before. He's been to mm -hmm. Nepal. He's been to so many of these right. countries. And he's, it's always about let's explore either something culturally or some or an important issue. So he uses platform for for those stories as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. The, the, one of the main reasons for me to go to to Pakistan with him is because I saw up until that point very little media coverage on a traditional uh, means. You know, when you when compared to other disasters that happen in the Western world, you know, if right. if like the Notre Dame when when it when it burned down, there, there was everywhere that was a building that just burned down. You know, and and these are here are 33 million people have been dis displaced, but I didn't see the same attention whether it's in traditional media outlets or whether it's with, with, with other influencers who usually would post about Ukraine or or, or or Notre Dame and so many other issues. But um, but so so that. Was was the, for me the the motivation was like well maybe I should do my part in that maybe I can if I have this opportunity to go with him uh, and get the access and platform that he will provide um, and and I can just bring my skills to it and tell a story uh, why not so I think um, he is definitely one influencer that is doing it I don't know how many other people are I, I've noticed a lot of people starting to share about about it since Khalid has done it so in a way hopefully that has sort of inspired people to sort of at least if they can't visit they can at least share those the, the things that we have done or sh share the other resources that other people are sharing and just let their audience know how they can help and first of all just to let them know that this is happening because a lot of people don't even know what's happening in Pakistan so um, to just to let them know that's the number one step and then how different ways that they can help whether it's giving uh, clothes or whether it's giving food supplies or whether it's a financial assistance on its own. So I'll, I'll digress a bit. Uh, what do you think about the multiple uh, and the various influencers coming uh, across the board? Yeah. So, what do you think about being a filmmaker? Yeah. The kind of uh, you know the level of work that you do. Yeah. And the influencers you see the videos that they make. So, what yeah. do you personally think about? Yeah. That? I mean, I mean, see, like I can, I can always be. There's two ways to think about it. Like I can always be that kind of a traditionalist and be like, oh no, a film and and you know, it's it's the right way of doing it. But at the end of the day, you know, we have platforms like TikTok and Instagram. They, those platforms. Um, encourage short-term quick things viewing so because of that we have these creators who are now 
embracing that even khalid makes a lot of these stories and mm-hmm. and reels and tiktoks and stuff like that so um so i think for me it's like if the audience is embracing a, a, a kind of storytelling on one way as as long as i hope it doesn't affect a long a more longer form storytelling as long as they are consuming both mm-hmm. uh, at at some point i think i'm okay there's enough room in this in this mm-hmm. in this world for different kind of content creators you know i have an audience of people who watch um uh, narrative stuff that i do and hopefully like some of the long form stuff that i'm that i'm doing with khalid they can they can watch that stuff as well but if they can consume that information in a 30 second um clip from mm-hmm. some someone else as long as it sort of creates the same impact for them individually then i think it's that's that's fine because it's just it's just a way a world is evolving you can either you can either completely like reject that or you can sort of embrace that and see what you can do within that world so i'm comfortable doing the way that i sort of operate but i'm like i don't have any you know ill will towards people who are finding sort of their own as long as hopefully they also use the platform for good and it's not just about narcissism and you know their own self uh, you know self obsessed things which again happen but as long as they use that audience for good once in a while i think it's all worth it at the end so uh, what you're trying to say the end justify the means i think so i think so i just so i think i think it just depends on influencer to influencer you know w- whether you're doing it to sort of because there are like you know some 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 influencers out there who just put out really bad messaging out out there or just in, like especially ones that have like kids as an audience and they're sort of putting out the wrong messaging and so they are act- actively putting sort of negative uh, things in the world but then there are some people like Khalid and there's some people like you know some other people who could just use their platform to hopefully shed light on interesting mm-hmm. things or tell interesting stories and and then I think overall it's just I don't think you can put influencers in one bracket even though they are the same uh, category and they're creating similar kind of content each one has their own moral compass and their own sort of ethics so uh, so hopefully they just use that to they they sort of understand the responsibility they have mm-hmm. and sort of the power that they have to kind of uh, in, like talk to millions at any given time right. uh, for good or for bad and hopefully they choose choose the good side of it yeah so you you think the quality is not diluting because of the craft i think i think i think definitely because uh, instagram tiktok and all these people they don't demand you to have like really super cinematic uh, imagery uh, and so there's no need to do that in fact some 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 of these platforms almost people prefer if it's if it's sort of rough and raw so um, so i think then it just comes back to the power of story you know the story no matter how you're shooting whether you're shooting something with a phone you're shooting something with a with a with a camera whether what you're shooting and whether the story you're telling is being told effectively i think it can still uh, do the job but i think there is still an audience you know people still go to cinemas to watch uh, big movies they'll still go and watch stuff stuff on netflix and stuff like that so people still demand quality there you know when the, when, when you'll watch a netflix show you don't expect that to look like a tiktok or a reel you'll be really pissed mm-hmm. if you watch a uh, a game of thrones and it looks like uh, like like smally so i think it's just an expectation thing when i open tiktok when i open instagram i think i'm very forgiving of the quality that i'll see there but i but i'm still not forgiving of the of the content so i think as long as it's exciting and it's engaging um you know i think that just covers and and sort of makes makes balance of it that, yeah. that's a beautiful uh, perspective okay yeah, thank you Excellent. now we'll Excellent. go back to our original uh, Uh, topic yeah. what's next and uh, you've been there you've seen you're planning to make a short you know a documentary but does it end over there or do you have other plans to do uh i mean definitely uh, with this experience what i've learned is i love this aspect of it as well i had i didn't have a lot of experience going out and sort of shooting unscripted documentary stuff because i i was more of a scripted guy i'm a writer director i i write my own scripts and so i i i i ha- i'm very used to that kind of control i have and i know yes. before i go on on to a set this is the characters this is a script this is our shortlist for the day um it's very different with documentary because you are going there and you are sort of sort of relying on the elements and hopefully anything can change at any given time it could rain and now you can't get anything like this and now you have to figure out capture something else or you might find an interesting story there that completely changes what you had in mind uh but there is a there is a truth to that so i think that's what that's what because there is a larger purpose to that not that when you make short films and people don't enjoy those those things as well but i think if you can use your your skills to tell a story that can actually matter in a grander scheme of things and actually make a tangible difference to people's lives um if i can find more opportunities to do that um, whether it's in pakistan whether it's in any other country that i can or any other cause that that has uh something that i could bring my it's all about like whether i can connect to it and whether i think i can elevate it and i can bring something from of my skill set um to that so uh, if i can find those opportunities whether it's with khalid or whether it's on my own um i would love to explore that because i think i've definitely gotten the the the, the feel for it and i definitely have gotten the kind of the thirst for for sort of doing so, that films that you are making you've uh, you worked on the genres of uh thriller yeah. you have uh, crime you have horror yeah. you have a bit of sci-fi comedy i believe yeah. yeah so is this going to open obviously the new chapter for a uh, social cause i absolutely as, as as i said i would love to because i think for me i'm a storyteller i i love these uh, i love horror films i love thriller and sci-fi but also i love just telling interesting stories and i've i've done um, documentary work before where i've where i've sort of captured the working class of dubai for example for dubai tourism uh, for me if i can connect with the cause 
it becomes an interesting story to tell and i think if i can it's more challenging because there is a lack of control in in those situations because when i land on that set i don't know what i'm capturing or what i'll be what i'll be getting will i get any footage at all will i get will i get stopped by somebody will i get so that is a little daunting at first compared to my short films where i have everything prepped everybody's ready everybody's i know i'll get everything in in the day um but i think there is a there's a thrill to that and there is a there is a larger purpose to that which i think uh you know balances that out so hopefully inshallah i can i can i can focus more on 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 those stories as well and and hopefully lend my skills of storytelling towards greater causes that that could need they could need that excellent we yeah. will be waiting for more such work from you thank you so much and uh thank you very much for the insights yeah, yeah and the amazing uh, perspective thank so, you so much. uh ladies and gentlemen the blue dot a with uh, faisal hashmi yes. and uh not only does he make short films but His work speaks volumes. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Like and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon for notifications from the blue dot AE.